And now, 89X presents Lincoln College Basketball on 88.9 FM and streaming live from the iHeartRadio app. Hi, and welcome into the Jack D. Nutt Arena where we had a good one here. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first Sunday game that we've ever had to call here at Lincoln College, so that's a first for everything. It's also Veterans Day here. It was a Veterans Day weekend, but we want to thank all of the veterans out there as well. I even got on my red, white, and blue tie as well to support. But again, Adam Hoffman, Nick Jackson with you as always. The Liddy Lynx back in action here today following a very, very tough loss the other day to Governor State. Yet last night, I believe 62 to 50 was the final in that one. And your Lynx do fall to one and four, but a chance to improve here against St. Ambrose today. Yeah, we had, we played fairly decent for a majority of that game. We just kind of lost it there at the end. Had some bright spots in the mix. I mean, Kalia Montero had 20 points again, once again, with 14 rebounds. And we had a pretty balanced scoring attack. Pretty much everyone scored on our team, except for who didn't score? Whitney. Whitney Guys did not score. She didn't play that many minutes, though. So, I mean, that's a pass for her, because she usually gets on the board in some, in, in some other way. But she is pretty good on the rebounds right now. No, she has, and that's something that we've been seeing more improvement of from Coach Polite's team as he's really trying to teach these guys how to play some defense and how to kind of pull down some rebounds because this is not a, a team that had they have shooters but have not been able to shoot the ball particularly well, so you're seeing them really kind of drive into the paint and kind of play more of Kalia Montero's game, which who had a pretty good game yesterday, I would believe. Yeah, she had definitely had a good game going back to that. The three-point shooting, I mean, it just hasn't been there for us, it seems like. it's We're a good shooting team. We have good shooters on the team, like you said, but they're just not falling for us. 5% last last night in that game. We went, uh, I think we hit one, one three-pointer that whole game. So, out of our, however many attempts, but, I mean, that needs to be improved, and I think it will. I think the shots will start falling for us, and... It'll get better from here. But that's that's not a, a Lincoln College team we're used to seeing here. I mean, like you said, they only hit one three-point shot, which is correct. They went one for 17 from behind yeah. the line. I mean, that is just unbelievable. It's not You don't usually see that from a Lincoln College team like this. But again, Adam, what are we looking forward to here today against St. Ambrose in town? They're 2-2, two and, two, and they're coming off of a, a loss on their home opener. So what can we expect from them? Yeah, they're coming off a 10-point loss to a Clark University. Colleen Grady had 22 points in that game, so that's someone to look for if you're the Lynx that you need to just kind of shut down early, just make sure she does not score the ball. And we're going to take a quick break for the National Anthem. Don't go anywhere, though. We'll have more stats and analysis coming your way. Tip off in just a few moments as you guys are listening to Lincoln College Basketball right here on 89X. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the Internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Every hiring manager knows that a company is only as good as the people it's made from. So where do you find the best people? That may surprise you. Meet the grads of life, young adults of unique determination and experience, an ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. This is talent worth knowing about. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Check her out. Oh, oh, man. I like that. When young men turn 18, they think they know a lot about the facts of life. But there are a few more facts they need to know. Fact, you have to register with Selective Service when you turn 18. It's the law. Fact, registration keeps you eligible for government jobs and student loans. Fact, it's easy to register. Just visit sss.gov or any post office. Register with Selective Service when you turn 18. It's the law. And that's a fact. We're back here in the Jack D. Nut Arena where, again, Lady Lynx getting set to go here just moments away as, again, St. Ambrose University, the Fighting Bees are in town, and they're coming off a loss to Clarkey University, 
58 was the final end now, and Adam did mention that Colleen Grady had a great performing night for the Bees. And that one, she went 8 of 10 from the field, 6 of 6 in the fourth quarter. That included three threes in the ball game. So look for her down the stretch, as Adam mentioned, to basically have a say in the outcome of this ball game. Also for the Fighting Bees as well. They didn't shoot the ball particularly well. 32% on the night with that last game. So they're looking to improve. Also 23 turnovers. So that's another thing that the Lynx can force as well. But let's get right to it though. Who are we going to see from the starting lineup for the Bees? At yeah, Fort St. Ambrose, they have number five, Jamie Martin. Number 10, Matty Cash. Number 12, Colleen Grady, who had that big night the other night with 22 points. Number 24, Candace Finnan, and number 30, Hannah Ford. And you see Grady in the starting lineup, so you got to look for her. How do the Lynx match up, though, in the starting lineup, though? I mean, you, you already know how it's really going to work, but who's going to be on Colleen? We'll have to find out right here as they're announcing the starting lineup for the Lady Lynx. In this one, let's just go right into it. Number two, Nanika Preston back in the starting lineup as she's been all season long. Tia Clark also in the mix. Hannah Cameron getting her third start as well, followed by Kalia Montero and Imani Smith here for the Lynx. Yeah, I really like the starting lineup we've been going with. Adding Hannah Cameron into the mix just gives us a different look on the offensive and defensive end. It seems like we can switch more things and we're more shooters on the floor. And now, I know we kind of have some keys to the game, but who are you going to watch out for on the Lynx side of things to really step up and have a big game and get the W here today? Well, it's, it's got to be Clea Montero. I think she's going to keep it going. You know, she's coming off a huge game yesterday, so I don't see her turning back now. I'm going to agree with you as well. I think Montero is definitely going to have to show something to St. Ambrose to kind of have a say in this ball game. I mean, she's really kind of been the dominating factor all season long and kind of the most consistent one for this Lynx team. Yeah, and also a name to throw out there is Hannah Cameron. I mean, she's been very consistent the past couple couple games, so just kind of waiting for that one game where she just kind of goes off and has over 15, maybe 20 points. And she only had four in the in the loss last night, but she was hit hard on the floor as the Lynx win the tip-off. A bounce pass from Clark down low to Montero, so they get things rolling with Montero early here, 2 nothing Lynx. That was a great pass there from Tia Clark, just splitting the defense with a nice little bass, bounce pass off the pick and roll for a Kalia Montero layup. And we'll see how St. Ambrose wants to fare here coming back the other way. Looks like Martins drives in, kicks it back out now to Grady. Again, Grady trying to work in on Cameron, but it's stolen away by Smith. Smith with a one-on-two fast break opportunity. She could get to Preston in the corner for three. No, rattles in and out, but a good good opportunity there for the Lynx. Yeah, it was a good shot opportunity. Just the struggles kind of continue uh, for Nautica Preston. Just not that good of a shooter right now. She just cannot find the bottom of the basket. And looks like now... Finnan trying to stick one in there, could not, as Preston comes up away with the steal, but then she's trying to feed Smith on the outlet, stolen back yet again. Here comes the V's the other way, as looks like number 10 trying to go coast to coast. Matty Cash is going to be fouled hard underneath their own basket. No, it's not really much. Uh, not a Preston could really do there. It's either give her the layup or try to foul her right there, and she does come up with the foul. Not a lot of contact, but did not allow her to really get a good shot up at the rim. She actually hit the bottom of the backboard. So she'll be at the line for two shots. And Cash is cashed on the first one. They get 2-1 our score here. Another thing to look for for St. Ambrose, only 47% from the, the free throw line in their last loss. So something that we could probably keep in our back pocket is Cash only goes one for two right there. Well, there's your 50% there, as you yeah, were just talking 50. about. 2-1 is our score. That could help the Lynx down the stretch. We've seen the guys and both, both the women's and men's team here at Lincoln College have some trouble from the three or from the free throw line as Clark at the top of the key now trying to swing it around to Preston in the right side corner. She'll get a screen from Hannah Cameron trying to feed her down low. She does as she drives baseline trying to full court pass one to Imani Smith but could not stolen away by Cash. Cash with the lob now to the rest of our teammates as she finds Colleen Grady in transition. Jumper no good off the side of the rim and out but an offensive rebound though for the Bees. Cash now with it at the top of the key. Throwing it around to Jamie Martins. And she'll try to drive in. Kicks it to the corner now for Ford. Ford from the corner, yes. And she'll hit a three. And St. Ambrose takes the lead for two. That's really just a defensive breakdown right there. We cannot 
let a wide open forward shoot that three from the corner. That's really one of the best three point shots you can take, and it's just wide open. And Montero now with it at the top of the key. Preston from the left wing takes a three, and she hits one home. She was 0 for 7 in the game yesterday. She's 1 for 2 here today. It's finally, it's good to see her hit one like that, because that was just a, a huge shot there for Nautica Preston. As now number 24, uh, Candace Finnan trying to go back in. She'll finish underneath the basket right there, make it 6-5. Now still in favor of the Fighting Bees as Clark puts up the floater inside the lane and she hits it. Kind of kind of hit the ground hard there, but gets up okay. Yeah, she's getting up. She's kind of limping down the court, but just the the fight of T. Clark is, is something you can just really get behind. She's fearless going to the basket. And Martin's now trying to feed Finnan down low, and she finishes yet again. So, again, really both teams trading baskets here early in the first quarter. And that's the third play in a row where Tia Clark has found the deck some some way or another. I'm sure she's going to be bruised after these back-to-back -back games yeah, here. Yeah, definitely the back-to-back -back games. She's got the basketball right now. She's going to stop and pop from a mid-range jumper, and she hits it with a foot on the line. So good to see her going early here. Yeah, already quick four points there for Tia Clark. We have not seen her really explode off the stat sheet with the scoring, so maybe that is today's watch really is Tia Clark. And Hannah Ford down low tries to draw a foul underneath. I believe it's going to go on Montero. It will. So that's going to be their third, her first for the team. And that's going to send Ford to the line for two shots. 9-8 is our score. Six and a half minutes to play here in quarter number one on Veterans Day. As the 50% that Adam was talking about, the first one is in and out. Yeah, like, yeah, like you said, first... First one in and out right there. A uh, couple substitutions. Victoria Malone and Samantha Rilford come in for the Lady Lynx, taking the place of Monty Smith and Kalia Montero, which is really surprising. We don't see Kalia Montero get that many minutes, even though she's by far the best rebounder on the team. Only got 25 minutes the other day, or yesterday, in a 40-minute ball game. So, and she's the best rebounder on the team. I'm not sure why she's not getting so many minutes. I would have to agree with you there. I'd love to see Coach Polite maybe play her just a little bit more. That I know foul trouble sometimes is a factor, but yesterday stayed out of foul trouble as Grady from the baseline with the mid-range jumper no good for the Bees. Coming back the other way, we're tied at nine, under six to play now. Victoria Malone with it, trying to feed Samantha Realford. She will, as she's going to be going right up with it, but Block gets it right back, trying to just throw it to somebody, but it's stolen away by the Bees. Here comes Martins, and she puts one up off the backboard, too strong, rebounded by Preston, and here come the Lynx. Clark now with it on the left wing, feeds Cameron down low baseline, trying to bounce past one to Realford, but could not connect, and it's out of bounds. A turnover for the Lynx, giving the ball right back to the Bees. Here comes Kennedy lolling in the game for the first time for Nautica Preston. She only got about seven minutes yesterday, which is kind of low for her because she's usually playing pretty much the whole game, it seems like. But ever since we got kind of the more girls back in the starting lineup, it seems like she her minutes have gone down a little bit, but she can really affect the game in a positive way. Pretty good shooter, and she's a pretty good defender as well. See what Miss Lawling wants to bring here to the tables. Working on her quickly on the defensive side of things is the Fighting Bees. As Martin's now trying to feed Cook down low, she'll somehow save it and gets it back out to Epperson, but looks like there's a foul going against the Bees. So no, that's like going to call it travel there on Epperson. She... She had a shot fake there, tried to go around, just moved her feet a little too quick. Either way, it a, is a turnover, and the Lynx will regain possession here as we are tied at nine. Five minutes to play in quarter number one, and the Lynx one and four on the season. The Bees come in two and two as they've only had one home game, and they've 0 and 1 in that span. As Realford squeezes one down low to Cameron, she cannot finish too strong. And here it comes back the other way for the Bees. And that really was the definition of squeezing it in there. She put it in between three girls. I'm not really sure how she got that pass to go through. As we're going to have a foul going underneath the basket, I believe it's going to go on Samantha Realford. As I can't see, I think it's number, I think it was Maddie Epperson was the one that drew the contact there. Actually, I take that back. It was, was Finnan. Finnan. Yeah. Couldn't see the number. There. We're right in line with them, and she's standing identical with us. Right, 
Second one, in and out. So one of two from the line, but an offensive rebound goes to the Bees. 10-9, they lead it by one as Finnan trying to feed Cook down low. Turn around, right hook, no good. Malone pulls down the rebound for the Lady Lynx, and she's going to run the point as well. Malone now with it on the right wing. She's going to be double teamed, but splits it. Finds Realford at the top of the key. Swings it to the left now for the wing in Clark. Clark back to the top of the key and Cameron. Cameron trying to feed one down low yet again to Realford. She does. She can't hit it, though. Gets her own miss. Saves it from going back out of bounds and finds Clark on the wing. A fresh 30 here for the Lynx. Lawling to Malone on the right side corner. Guarded very closely by St. Ambrose now in Martins. Top of the key now for Realford. Realford going left to Lawling. Lawling gets a screen from Realford. Drives left side lane. Puts one up off the glass. Can't get it to go. Finally, St. Ambrose pulls down a rebound. Uh, here's Epperson. Epperson coming the other way. Trying to find... Someone down low, just not get it. There is Hannah Cameron with the seal. She's going to bring it back up to Tia Clark, who goes in for a floater. There was some contact there and a very late whistle, I might add. So she's going to go to the line for two shots. And back to what you just mentioned about somehow, some way, Tia Clark finding the floor, always being aggressive, just once again got nailed to the ground, but going to the line for two shots. Now she's just... She's fearless going to the basket. I think I've said that so many times, but it's just for a, a girl her size. I mean, she's she's short and very skinny, and she just still just goes in there amongst the trees and just tries to finish, and she usually does. I really wish you would have been here the year before she would have had her torn shoulder. Yeah. As you would have been able to see, I mean, this girl can really fly. She can really shoot the basketball at a, at a great rate, and it's really quick. It's a quick shot. And for how little she is, she provides that a huge spark to this team. Yeah, I think that definitely she's a huge spark this year as well. I mean, she's in the starting lineup, but, I mean, it seems like we're, especially with no Aaron Young this year, just she's kind of that that captain on the floor for us. And when if you would have saw both of those two together, it would have been something else as Lawling comes up with a steal right there, still trying to kick, tip it out. I thought Lolly might have tipped it out of bounds, but they're going to say it was last touched by St. Ambrose. So the Lynx, yet again, are going to get the ball back here tied at 10. Three and a half minutes to play now. Imani Smith will throw it into Lolly. Lolly down low to Montero. Good ball movement there. She'll put one up off the glass and, and gets it to go. Seems like Montero, when she gets into that four or five foot circle range of the basket, she knows exactly what she's doing every time. She's been doing a really good job of just... Just posting up very well and just putting up smart shots. I mean, she's not just throwing the ball up there trying to get her own miss. But usually when she does miss, she gets her own rebound, so it kind of works out. <laughs> she kind of builds her own stats by herself right there. As that shot no good by Grady. As offensive rebound, though, goes to Epperson. She can't hit the five-rage baseline jumper. As the Lynx come back the other way, they lead it by two, 12-10, 2.45 to play in the first quarter. Smith goes to the left side for Malone. Malone drives baseline, can't get it to go. Montero's down low, tied up with one of the St. Ambrose players' jump ball, and I believe it's going to go to St. Ambrose. Yeah, it does go to St. Ambrose. I was just really worried there that Clean Montero was going to pick up an over-the-back foul. It seems like St. Ambrose had about four girls in there, and Montero just came crashing in there just trying to get that ball, but we kind of worked out for us. Just got the jump ball. I would have to say that's probably one of their only downfalls of Montero. She's almost too aggressive sometimes trying to go get those defensive rebounds and offensive rebounds for the Lynx as we're going to have a foul going here against Victoria Malone. So kind of a push off there. She's going to pick up her first team's fourth. St. Ambrose set the inbound underneath their own basket. They finally get it into the backcourt. They find Carousel. And she's going to take a jumper just from the right side lane. Cannot hit. Monty Smith pulls down the rebound trying to feed Lawling. She could not as it's over her head right into the hands of Epperson. And here comes St. Ambrose yet back the other way. Clear now down low to Laffery. She can't hit but gets her own miss. Put back no. Yet again, ball still tipped into the hands of Imani Smith. And the Lady Lynx going back the other way. Smith now finally going to slow it down and set up this offense here for the Lady Lynx. Now we need a good shot right here. We just need to keep extending our lead. Just not throwing up dumb shots. As Victoria Malone trying to feed Gines. I mean, had the play, but again, Gines just a little too ca careless there. And that one just kind of lost her balance. And that one's either way going to be stolen right back from, from Lawling. As M Malone now with it. To Smith. Smith feeds Montero down low. Turn around right hook off the glass. And you know it. Too easy for Montero. And yeah, Montero has just been 
kind of a beast down there lately. I mean, she is just schooling people down low. Just nice little drop step, power move, and it's going to be a, a bucket almost every time. One of the most consistent players that Coach Polite has right there is the long three from Epperson. No good, but an offensive rebound put back. No. However, though, there's going to be a foul going against the Lynx underneath their own basket. And I see over there, Nautica Preston just kind of stretching out her legs. As soon as she came out of the game, just kind of went over to the trainer's table, just kind of sat down on the ground and just was trying to stretch something out. So maybe her legs might be cramping up today or something like that. Just might have like maybe a pulled hamstring. We're not sure. So hopefully she is okay and is able to return. This is where the, the schedule gets pretty hefty for yeah. the Lady Lynx. This is already for their really, third game in four days. Yeah, really for both teams. I mean, both teams kind of just play maybe three, maybe four nights a week from in the in the rest of November here. As second free throw, no good. What Hits one of two, but we'll have to keep an eye on Nanaka Preston over there. I mean, that's one of the Lynx starters sitting on the bench trying to stretch things out again. Lynx have played th in three games in the last four days. This Lady Lynx team has, so you know they're definitely tired, especially coming off a of back-to-back like this, playing back-to-back, -back, I should say, playing last night. And then on Thursday as well. But they're going to have a turnover right there as that's going to give the ball right back to St. Ambrose. So 14-11 is our score with under a minute to play in the first quarter. Links up by three. St. Ambrose now with the basketball. They could have a two-for-one opportunity here if they so choose. Smith in working on color as she'll, we, she'll feed Laffrey and she'll finish with a one-foot jumper. So with, with the running clock. Links lead by one. As they will have, uh, hopefully, the last possession here. Shot clock and game clock separated by about six seconds here for the quarter number one. 14-13 as Clark does it across to Walling. Smith now with it to Cameron. Cameron on the left wing to Clark. Clark drives baseline but has it poked away and into the hands of St. Ambrose as they have a fast break opportunity. Lawling trying to do everything she can. She does draw the foul, however, but number 25, Gabrielle Keller, Kelker, has ended up at the free throw line. Very unfortunate there that she, Lowling, kind of fell over. If she wouldn't have fallen into her, it would probably wouldn't have been a foul. I mean, she just had her hands straight up, just contesting the shot pretty well. I like the hustle coming back the other way, just making them earn the points at the free throw line. And it looked like that ball does not lie as she misses that first free throw. And I've we've seen the free throw and you said earlier in this game that they weren't going to shoot well from the free throw line i didn't think anybody could be as possibly as bad as what we've seen from early in this guy season but i don't know st ambrose is keeping pace right there with them as they, she misses the second one as well yeah so it was a good foul it was a good foul definitely girls i mean they'd be ahead right now but i mean it was a good foul she misses two free throws we're going back the other way and we know how that feels all too well. Shot clock turned off. Here comes Imani Smith to bring it up the floor. Five seconds to go. She picks up her dribble, can't find anything, just throws up a prayer. Hits the front of the rim somehow. About went in. It was on target, but just a tad bit short. But a good first quarter here for the Lady Lynx as they lead by one at the end of one. 14-13. We're going to take a timeout. Don't go anywhere for quarter number two. Stay tuned. Your Lynx lead by one. So you guys are listening to Lady Lynx basketball right here on 89X. Chances are there'll never be an emergency ever again. But just in case, let's talk about a plan. Okay. Who is going to grab the go bag? What's a go bag? It is a bag we do not have that is filled with things we really, really need in an emergency. Guess we won't have to worry about it then. Well, this is great. <laughs> I am so glad that we don't have a plan. I know. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. We're back in the Jack Dean Nut Arena where we're getting set for quarter number two. 14-13 is our score. Lady Lynx lead after one. Adam, it was a good first quarter. The Lynx kind of stayed out of some foul trouble as well. But what did you see kind of in that first quarter to really that the Lynx did right to set the tone here for the ball game? You know, I think uh, I think we came out swinging the ball pretty well. We're feeding Kalia Montero consistently, and she's scoring pretty well. So, And on the defensive end, I mean – kind of give up we're kind of giving up some open shots I and mean, we really shouldn't be giving up too many open jump shots this is not like the team we played like yesterday who didn't really have the jump shot there they yesterday they kind of just focused on pounding the ball inside so we were pushing up down on them this is a different team we have to adjust so 
Don't allow them to get open jump shots, and I think we'll be okay. And also the Lynx did a pretty good job of keeping Grady quiet in that first quarter. Still a couple more to go, so they got some work to do, but they will have the basketball to start this second quarter. They lead by one. 14-13 over St. Ambrose as Clark drives left side lane, puts one up off the glass. But I believe they're going to say it was on the floor. So the Lynx will inbound underneath their own basket with eight second, or well, with a fresh 30 now. As the foul is going to go on number 10, Maddie Cash, her first team's first here in the second quarter. Smith yeah. down low to Cameron. Cameron with the turnaround right hook just off the front of the rim and out. It was a good play there to get Hannah Cameron un- wide open underneath, just unable to finish. And Realford unable to get that offensive rebound. As it looks like now, Martins feeds Finnan down low, and she'll hit the left-hand hook shot off the glass, get a little help there, but... St. Ambrose back on top by one. There's not really much Nautica Preston could do down there. She's not a post player at all, so she doesn't really know how to defend the post that well, and it was just a good move there. As Clark throws up a long three, no good. Tried to bank that one home from the top of the key. Could not. Here comes St. Ambrose the other way. Cash trying to feed Grady down low. Could not, I believe. Clark might have got a, a hand on it, but it ends up in the hands of Preston. Preston feeds Cameron. Cameron left side lane throws up a, a shot. Could not hit, but is fouled, so we'll go to the line for two opportunities right here. And Hannah Cameron just very smart there not to take that jump shot. Just try to go around and get a better shot at the basket. She's going to pick up a, or she's going to draw a foul here, I should say, and go to the line for two. The first one in and out for Hannah Cameron. And though we saw her, hopefully she's still recovering, like we said, with Nanaka Preston stretching out her hamstrings. Cameron hit the deck pretty hard yesterday, and we thought maybe had some concussion-like symptoms. Seems okay here so far. Yes, yeah, seems definitely okay. That's a scary scary thought there, just kind of dodge as she makes her second free throw right there to tie the game up at 15. So we're tied at 15, as Hoffman just said. St. Ambrose coming back the other way as Epperson somehow feeds Grady. She's strapped on the baseline, though, kicks it back out. To the right side corner and Cash swinging it around the perimeter now for Finnan and she takes a three. No, but saved by Amani Smith from going out of bounds into the hands of St. Ambrose as Eberson now with it over to Martins. Martins takes a jumper from the baseline. No offensive rebound for Grady. Put back is in. Maybe it could have been a foul as well, but no foul was called. 17-15 St. Ambrose leads. Yeah, we're lucky that didn't get called as an and one like you said. I saw Amani Smith kind of swat down and I thought they were going to call a foul. As now they double-team Montero on the baseline there. She had it poked away, but then regains control of it. They will say jump ball possession arrow in favor of St. Ambrose. So that'll give the ball right back. But you, you got to like Coach Polite's team. They're trying to feed Montero as much as they can. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely the bread and butter of the offense right now. So you might as well just go to it until they can shut it down consistently. So that's what they're trying to do right now. As Epperson, a jumper from the free throw line, no good. Into the hands of Imani Smith, but... Martins pokes it away from behind her as Smith had no idea that she was even standing there. Now Grady with it as Finnan drives in and a little up and under move underneath the basket. Could not go. Cameron pulls down the rebound for the Lynx. Finds Montero and an outlet to Imani Smith. Here's where the Lynx really need to kind of set something up here on offense. Yeah, they really need to get a, a set play right here, get a good shot just to try to tie this ball game up or possibly take the lead. Clark now feeds Smith. They got 10 seconds on the shot clock. She's trying to drive into the baseline, but picks up her dribble. As Preston now with it to Clark in the right side corner, drives baseline, kicks it back out to Preston. Two seconds on the shot clock. She throws up a prayer, can't get it to go. Almost gets her own miss. Ball's loose on the floor, but it's going to roll out of bounds. As Clark was also there trying to save it as well. Good effort by the Lynx, but just could not get there in time. Yeah, just unable to get the ball like you said, but just nice hustle there from Nautica Preston and Tia Clark just both hitting the deck pretty hard and just trying to get that ball. And the Lynx are having some better ball movement, I would say, here in this game than they did the other day. Yeah, they they were kind of seeing what we saw like the start of the second half yesterday when we were, were, were marveling at their ball movement. That's kind of what we're seeing consistently here to start this game. And they feed Grady down low, but she's going to be double teamed as Clark and Cameron were both there. They both thought it was going to be a foul on one of them, but instead they call a traveling violation on Grady, and it's going to give the ball back to the Lynx. I think it was the right call, really, just because Hannah Cameron kind of had her hand on the ball, so it forced Grady to kind of move her feet around, so it was a good call there by the official. 
Victoria Malone checked in as well. She'll throw it to Montero at the top of the key. And swinging it around from Clark to Preston now in the corner. Left side corner. Preston thought about baseline. Kicks it back out to the top of the key. And Cameron. Cameron right side lane. Now back out to Clark. Clark stopping. Thought about a pop. But instead feeds Cameron back out to Clark. With three seconds on the shot clock. Just going to have to throw up a floater. She does. Hits the front of the rim. Can't get it to go. Montero offensive rebound. Put back. Yes. So Kalia Montero doing the dirty work off the glass. I mean, just the way that we can run our team now, as there's a foul there, I believe it's going to go on Hannah Cameron as her second foul, team's first of the second quarter. But it's like as soon as the clock runs out, all you got to do is throw the ball up next to the rim, make sure the shot clock restarts because Montero is most likely going to come up with that rebound. So it just gives us that much more of an offensive edge. And, you know, you don't really want to say just throw up a prayer and, and have it hit the rim, but you're exactly right. I mean, she'll go get it. Yeah, she's not afraid to go get a rebound. Just you like that. Get one right there, and she's going to draw a foul as well. I think that one went on Maddie Campbell, or no, it went on Maddie Epperson, I bet. Get Co- the Maddies. couple Maddies yeah, there. getting the Maddies confused. I'm sure uh, their head coach also doesn't appreciate yeah. it at times. Yeah. 17-17 is our score. Preston for three at the top of the key, and she hits a three. That's what we want to see. She's got two here today. Does Nanika Preston after going 0 of 7 last night. Yeah, just good to see her. And Get Montero comes away with the steal. A fast break opportunity there, and she'll lay it up and in with the left hand. So not only can Montero play some defense, but she can run the floor as well. I mean, this, this team is looking pretty good right now. Just imagine... In January, when we get Ben Coley and Aaron Young back, I mean, we're going to be a scary team. We already are a scary team if the record doesn't show that, but we're a good team. We're just playing tough teams. I would have to agree with you right now. This is a learning process for this group that's out there on the floor. You wait till they get Ben Coley and Aaron Young back as well, and they're going to really be a force to be reckoned with, like you said, Adam. And now Nanaka Preston coming back the other way, a little floater. Teardrop gets it to go for her, so maybe this is the kind of start Nanaka Preston needed here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she's hitting a couple shots back-to-back, has the two three-pointers. That definitely helps with the confidence, so it's good to see her back and playing pretty well. And we knew she could shoot the ball like this. She's definitely capable of it as Epperson from downtown. No, Montero with a rebound. Outlet to Malone. And here come the Lady Lynx back the other way. Cross the court pass to Clark. Clark bounce passes one down low to Malone, but it's going to be kicked underneath the basket. Otherwise, that was also another two easy points for the, the Lady Lynx here. And just another kind of questionable sub. I mean, Samantha Brealford comes back in, and she takes the place of Kalia Montero. You know, she's coming off the big steal right there, has a couple monster rebounds and the the buckets, and just why are you taking her out when she's rolling? I, I don't, I'm not sure about that. I mean, you want to get Realford into the game definitely for her defense, but, you know, maybe keep both of them in the game at the same time because St. Ambrose has a pretty good post presence. Well, we saw Babro kind of liked that situation last year a little bit with Van Coley and Montero both being in the starting lineup as Cameron pokes that one away as St. Ambrose got it to steal. They ended up stealing it right back. Martin's with it, and she'll lay it up and in with the left hand. So we went steal by St. Ambrose, steal by the Lynx, steal by St. Ambrose, two points for St. Ambrose. Yeah, that was kind of a, a very uh, very odd play right there. You don't see that too often. You don't see a change of possession within two seconds of each other just back to back to back like that. The Lady Lynx now have the basketball. You look for them to kind of run down this shot clock like they've been doing here in the last few possessions. Malone now with it on the left wing. She picks up her dribble trying to find Cameron, who's at the top of the key. Instead, bounce passes one down low to Realford. Realford thought about a, a second, last-second shot, but there's only one second on the shot clock. Clark yet again had to just throw up another little floater. This time, it doesn't work out as St. Ambrose snuck that one out, and it's going to be a shot clock violation. Yeah, I, I'd say it probably would have been called a foul if she would have got the shot off in time. It probably would have went our way, but just Kay Clark was still kind of dribbling and getting into the shot when the shot clock went off. I was kind of interested, too, to wonder why Realford didn't kind of just throw up the right-hand hook with about three seconds on the shot clock. I just not aware, really. So that's probably something we need to work on, just court awareness. And 24-19, the Lynx still lead, though, with three and a half minutes to play as that one's poked away from down low as St. Ambrose, well, Clark stole it away and then had it poked away yet again, so St. Ambrose will have another possession right here Rawling now down low to Cook Cook to I believe that was Grady instead that was Flynn 
as, again, that's going to make it now a three-point game. And very easily could have been an and one right there as Victoria Malone comes in the lane swatting at the ball and kind of got her arm. Maybe they're taking notes from Tyrone Wright as he's a very aggressive swatter at that time. Lawling now with it here for the Lady Lynx. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Realford with it at the top of the key over to Clark on the right side corner. Five seconds to go. Somebody's going to have to take the shot. Cameron now with it, swinging it to Lawling. Lawling throws up a, a long three from downtown as the shot clock expires. No outlet to St. Ambrose as they have number four, Carlson, running the floor. But she can't fit. But yet again, Haley Cook right behind her gets the miss and put back, or the put back no, but the foul, yes. Yeah, so just sending them to the line once again, I think kind of a smart play by now. I mean, because they haven't really been hitting their free throws, so make them earn the points, really. The only thing free, fro- free throws, free throws, there we go. <laughs> Third time's a charm there. It's, could not say it, but again, what I was going to say, they, they only hurt yourself. I mean, or they can only help you. Yeah, I mean, it's either either you make them or you miss them and you kind of look silly out there because they're free points. I mean, this is probably what every coach in, in the country stresses right here. And she does end up hitting a pair. So I'm back to a one-point lead here for the Lady Lynx, 24-23. Two and a half minutes to play before halftime in the Jack D. Nutt Arena. Walling with it now on the left wing to the top of the key in Montero. To the right wing this time in Smith. Smith trying to set up her troops and feed Montero down low. They had her positioned well, but they could not find her as they give it back to Malone at the top of the key. Lawling now with it in the right side corner. Down low to Montero. Montero double teamed. Can't hit as she almost went for an offensive rebound, but instead could not corral it. And St. Ambrose coming back the other way. Now with a jumper would be number 21 flying. And she can't hit, but yet again we're going to have a traveling violation with the offensive rebound. As I believe it was Matty Cash who came down with that and then took too many steps. So that'll give the ball right, or I'm sorry, the Lynx took too many steps. And St. Ambrose will have the ball right back. They'll inbound underneath their own basket. The Fighting Bees will have it. They trail by one over your Lincoln College Lady Lynx. As again, Carousel trying to drive in. She could not hit. I believe Montero pulled down the the rebound and then drew a foul all in the same time. So the Lynx will get the basketball here with a minute 47 to go before halftime. Yeah, it's one thing I really noticed that St. Ambrose keeps doing. As soon as we get the rebound, they have active hands down low just trying to strip the ball from us. Just unable to do it right there is Flynn, who just comes up with the foul right here. That's only her first. Smith now with it. They lead by one. Your Lady Lynx do over the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees here in this one. A minute 35 to go. Smith with it now on the right wing. Trying to drive into the lane. Kicks it back out to Realford at the top of the key. Over to Clark on the left side. Clark goes around the screen. Trying to feed Montero down low. She does and she'll hit on the right side of the lane. So back to three now for the Lady Lynx. I would say that's probably around ten points for Kalia Montero as well with quite a few rebounds. So I'm curious to see that stat sheet at halftime. It's always interesting to see how much Montero has. Very close to a 20-20 point game the other day as I believe Epperson nailed a long range three. So we're tied at 26 with under a minute to play now. Here come the Lady Lynx. Again, both teams with five timeouts. If they so choose to take one right here, it looks like they're going to try to go for a two-for-one opportunity. Smith now with it. She's trapped, trying to feed Clark, but instead stolen away by Carousel, and she'll go up and in and lays it up and in as well. So St. Ambrose now back on top by two. Again, seven-second difference between shot clock and game clock. 30 seconds to play here before halftime. Lady Lynx with the basketball. Smith now with it at the top of the key, looking left to Lawling. To the corner now in... Clark down low to Montero. Montero double team. Tries to throw up a shot. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by St. Ambrose here. Shot clock turned off as we're at 10 seconds to play. They lead by two. 28-26 right here before halftime. Looks like Epperson's going to run the point. She gets a screen. Goes right side lane. Goes coast to coast. Cannot finish. Offensive rebound though. Put back. No. As they will draw a foul here with .4 seconds to go before halftime as... Flynn going to go to the line for two shots. I was going to say why for two shots, but I guess they're in the bonus. Coach Blight does not like the call at all. as He just goes and takes a seat at the end of the bench, so it'll be Flynn at the line for two. 
And if you're Coach Polite, you cannot be pleased with what you're seeing right here in this one. You're, you're .4 seconds away from getting out of the half, and they bailed them out. Yeah, I really just, like you said, bailed them out. He's still just kind of chirping at the referee, just not sure why that, that is called at that point of the game. As they got an offensive rebound, the putback wasn't got, wasn't going to matter anyway. I didn't think she got it off in time, but we've seen it been called before here in the Jack Dean Arena, but that's how we're going to end at halftime as we go to halftime here. 29-26, Lady Lynx led pretty much the entire first half except for the last minute of the half. Again, Adam, what did you see in that first half that really kind of got Lady Lynx going because they seem like they're the better team here in this one? I mean, I really like the penetration that we're having. Just kind of kick it off to Clea Montero down low. It seems like we've done that a couple times with Tia Clark and Amani Smith, but it seems like we're not shooting the ball at all. I mean, it doesn't seem like we're shooting threes like we usually do. I mean, Amani Smith, I don't think, has an attempt from the three-point line, which is very odd for her because she usually tries to shoot as many as she can. And I mean, not a compressing but two for three, I think that might be it for three-pointers attempted. So, I mean, something to look for in the second half, just maybe trying to get more threes in our favor because that's what we're, we're really good at shooting. So I'm not really sure why we're trying not to today. Well, I'm sure with the with all the poor with all the poor shooting performances that this team's had recently, I'm sure that there was a point of emphasis saying, you know, hey, let's get the ball inside, let's feed the paint. But it's part of the game. You have to shoot the ball well at some point in time. And I think right now with the way St. Ambrose is playing and the way the Lady Lynx are playing, you got some shooters that have gotten hot in the first half, and I think you need to feed them in the second as well. Nanaka Preston being one of them. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Nanaka Preston needs to get a little more shots, a few more shots in the second half. I mean, she was even making tough layups at the basket, so it's just kind of one of those things where she needs to get the ball as soon as she can just because she can make things happen on the court. And 29-26 as we head to halftime, St. Ambrose leads by three, but don't go anywhere. Again, the second half coming your way next in about 10 minutes, so don't go anywhere. We'll see if the Lynx got a fight in them here for the second half. They trail by three, 29-26 as we head to halftime. You're listening right here to Lincoln College Lady Lynx Basketball on 89X. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the Internet's most beloved pets, and they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Every hiring manager knows that a company is only as good as the people it's made from. So where do you find the best people? That may surprise you. Meet the grads of life, young adults of unique determination and experience, an ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. This is talent worth knowing about. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Check her out. Oh, oh, man. I like that. When young men turn 18, they think they know a lot about the facts of life. But there are a few more facts they need to know. Fact, you have to register with Selective Service when you turn 18. It's the law. Fact, registration keeps you eligible for government jobs and student loans. Fact, it's easy to register. Just visit sss.gov or any post office. Register with Selective Service when you turn 18. It's the law. And that's a fact. Chances are there'll never be an emergency ever again. But just in case, let's talk about a plan. Okay. Who is going to grab the go bag? What's a go bag? It is a bag we do not have that is filled with things we really, really need in an emergency. Guess we won't have to worry about it then. Well, this is great. <laughs> I am so glad that we don't have a plan. I know. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn to spot a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. I'm Paul George. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. 
Did you just look down at your phone? You did it again, didn't you? You know, you're flying down the road in a three-ton hunk of steel. And a text takes your eyes off the road for an average of five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's long enough to travel the length of a football field and cause some serious damage. Turn it off. Trust me. Whatever it is, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. If you're a guy turning 18, you need to register with the Selective Service System. It's the law, and we wanted to make absolutely sure you get the message, so we brought in someone we knew you'd pay attention to. 50 push-ups! Uh, hey, coach. Get on that computer! SSS.gov! Not fast enough! 50 jumping jacks! It's for your own good. Because not registering with Selective Service could cost you a shot at college loans and grants, federal jobs, job training, and in most states, it could even cost you a driver's license. I'm talking to you! Run that hill! 50 hills! Go to SSS.gov to register with Selective Service. Two minutes and you're done. It's just something you have to do. Pick up the pace! 50 ballet jumps over the alligator pit! Register with Selective Service at SSS.gov within 30 days of turning 18. If you don't, the consequences could be ugly. Don't you smirk at me! 50 belly flops into moving traffic! It only takes a minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. And you can do it at doihaveprediabetes.org. But you're probably not going to, are you? Kids, work, listening to the radio. You're busy, which is great because busy people can't get prediabetes. Oh my, I read that wrong. <laughs> They can. Should have worn my glasses. So visit doihaveprediabetes.org and take a short test because prediabetes can be reversed. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. So I'm a cat and I just moved in with this new human and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week she asked it for Chinese and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend. Someone being bullied online, you can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You're not wired to have a response to this sound. You're neutral to it. And you can hear it repeatedly without feeling anything. But when we introduce a new stimulus, save the food. We've achieved pulling a natural or inborn response from you. Save the food. Because 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. Save the food. Cook it, store it, share it. Just don't waste it. For tips and recipes, visit savethefood.com. Brought to you by NRDC and the Ad Council. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human. And she's got this little toy she's always playing with. All day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg rolls showed up. Like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. You make sure his toys don't have any sharp edges. You taught her what to do when the smoke alarm goes off and to wear a helmet when she rides her bicycle. You do so much to keep your child safe. But are you using the right car seat for your child? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Protect your child's future at every stage of life. For information on the right seat for your child, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. Take one. Behold the angry giant. Try it again, Alberto. Behold the angry giant. Perfect. Good luck tonight. Behold the the Angry Giant. Yay! Read me another one, Dad. This is WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. 
Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hey, y'all, I'm Blake Shelton. I love that country music connects people all over this great nation, but unfortunately, so does something else. Childhood hunger. 15 million children struggle with hunger in America. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks works to rescue our surplus food to help provide billions of meals to families in need across the country. Join the fight against hunger at feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. For some people, difficult transitions like retirement, divorce, or loss of a loved one may contribute to feelings of hopelessness or even thoughts of suicide. The risk of suicide is even higher for men over 50 who've served our country. Guys like me. Support from friends and family makes such a big difference. Every day, your actions could help save a life. Learn how you can help at VeteransCrisisLine.net. Hey. Hi, nice neighborhood. You must have a strong community association board. I don't pay any attention to that stuff. How do you know the board and community manager are making the right decisions? I don't, but what can I do? Connect with CAI. CA what? CAI, Community Associations Institute. They're a nonprofit group with free resources for your board, training for community managers, and information for homeowners. Protect your investment at responsiblecommunities.com. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost, for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. Okay, men, this is your time. Maybe you didn't choose this, but you're here now. You're going to go out there and be an all-star caregiver. Cook, clean, be there emotionally and physically. you got to dig deeper. Drive them to physical therapy, doctor's appointments, because that's what caregivers do. Don't give up. Show the world that you're tougher than tough. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. In retirement, I thought my husband and I would enjoy going places together. Our son's drinking interfered with our plans. We worried about him and our grandchildren and didn't know where to go for help. We found help and support at Al-Anon family group meetings in hospitals, churches, and schools. Is someone's drinking troubling you? You might be surprised at what you can learn at an Al-Anon family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying. Learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. So can you. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and CDC. What is it? I got into state. Yes. What's the other letter? Oh, no. If you're a young man and fail to register with Selective Service within 30 days of your 18th birthday, you will not be eligible for financial aid. No, no, no. To register, visit sss.gov on your computer or smartphone. It's quick, it's easy, and it's the law. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the Internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. We're back here in the Jack Dean Arena, 29-26, as we're moments away here from starting the third quarter. But, Adam, just taking a look at the stat sheet here right now, again, leading the way for the Lynx is none other than Kalia Montero, as we kind of had a a pretty good idea that that was going to be it. But what else do you see on the stat sheet that kind of really kind of 
stood out to you the most? We had 16 turnovers. I think that's really the downfall right now, and we're lucky that the score isn't higher. I mean, we're, we're lucky that we're not down by more just because we've had so many turnovers. We forced 10, which is pretty good, but we have to clean it up here in the second half. We're not shooting the ball particularly well. I mean, we're 44% from the field, 33% from the three-point line, 50% from the free throw line on only four attempts, though. One thing that really kind of stuck out to me, though, and, and you just mentioned it right there from the from the behind the arc. Last, last, or I should say yesterday, we were one for 12 in the first half from behind yeah. the line. This time, two for six. Being more cautious, being more aware of what kind, type of shots we're taking. And I kind of, I got to point that out. Yeah, we're just not, like, chucking them up there. Like, we're taking, like you said, conscious shots. I mean, we're just, we're actually thinking about it like you know do we need a three right now or should we try to get something else but i mean when we're open we're shooting them and we've actually made a couple of them so it's okay and the lady Lynx will have the possession here to start the third quarter as it's clark smith cameron montero and preston out on the floor as preston takes a step back long two they're going to say foot was on the line either way no good as she cannot hit rebounded by st ambrose as they're coming back the other way cash with it trying to to feed Martins on the baseline. She could not, almost lost it out of bounds right in front of her head coach. Instead, to the top of the key, now in Grady. Grady looking to the right side, in Ford. Ford down low to, I believe, it was Finnan, and she cannot hit. off it, or The rebound goes to Montero, and then Finnan picks up a foul 90 feet away from the basket. That was a good, good position there by Kalia Montero, allowing that off, a lot, not allowing that offensive rebound to Finnan, just getting the ball, just... Drew the foul, and she falls to the deck, so it's going to be a foul on Finnan. That's only her first foul. Clark now coming back the other way here for the Lynx. Some better ball movement here to start the third quarter as Preston swinging around the premier to Clark. Clark drives baseline, puts up a shot, can't get it to go. Montero and Smith were both there, but instead it's into the hand of Finnan for St. Ambrose. She finds, I believe that's Ford, who's driving coast to coast, and she picked up some speed but ran right into Nanaka Preston, who was there to take the charge. And it's going back the other way. That was like a picture-perfect charge right there for Nanika Preston. Realized she was just going to kind of go for the bas- go for a layup there. So she just planted her feet, just absorbed the contact, and fell over. That's pretty picture-perfect. And you can usually, you'll feel the charges tomorrow morning, I would say. Yes. <laughs> Not in the moment type. As a little 2-3 zone here by St. Ambrose. But Nanika Preston is going to bury home a three on the other end as we're all tied at 29. That's it- just really... Good to see not compress the shooting well again. I mean, just had the rough game yesterday. Had a pretty rough game on Thursday as well, but it's really good to see here just kind of starting to switch some threes again. Well, you mentioned it in the guys game. You have to basically shoot your way out of a slump. Nautica Preston did just that. Again, you had some had some bad games, but here today, again, she had both of the threes in the first half, and she gets them rolling here with the first three in the second half as well. St. Ambrose did answer on the other end. They take it. A bucket by Emperson as she laid it up and in. Make it 31-29. Clark now to Preston. Again, some more action here in the zone as Smith will catch it at the free throw line. Feeds Hammond on the baseline, but it's going to be called for a travel. They're a little too quick. It is Hammond to Cameron, and we're going back the other way. Yeah, she tried to shot fake and go around. Just when she shot fake, she just kind of moved without starting the dribble there. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. Now St. Ambrose, the Fighting Bees with it. Maddie Cash trying to drive in. Left side lane on Imani Smith. Instead feeds Ford. Ford with a five-foot jumper from the baseline. No, Montero pulls down the rebound. An outlet to Monty Smith. Cameron now with it. She kind of fell on the floor. Didn't lose the dribble, though. Finds Clark. She'll take a long three. No good. Rebounded by Montero, who ends up tipping it out of bounds. And it'll go back to the Fighting Bees. Do you see what Tia Clark just did? She kind of just... Was like throwing her arms up, practicing practicing her shot, but it looked so quick that didn't even look like she was like trying to shoot. That was just a little weird setting there from Tia Clark. And got to stay warm somehow gotta out stay there warm, on, yeah. on the floor as they feed again. Finnan down low, but Montero, I believe, kind of gave her the body. So they give that one on. They will give it to Montero. So her second team's first here in the third quarter as the Lynx trail by two, 31-29. St. Ambrose set to inbound underneath their own basket. They throw it in to Ford. Ford now to Finnan, who takes a long three. No. Preston comes flying in for the offensive or for the rebound. Howled it to Montero. 
as Coach Polite wanted a foul there as Finnan kind of pushed Montero out of the way. Smith now fell over. No foul called. Polite still having a case. Maddie Cash going coast to coast, and now there's a ticky tack foul going the other way as Preston almost got her hand in there for the steal. And she did get her hand in there for the steal, but I think they're going to give that to Tia Clark, and they do. I didn't see that much contact, but, I mean, maybe we had a, a different angle on it, but I thought that ball was poked free by Tia Clark and recovered there by Nanaka Preston. So St. Ambrose set the inbound once again underneath their own basket. Some of these calls have not gone Coach Polite's way, and he's very frustrated about that as Maddie Cash drives in. They're going to call a traveling violation this time. They wanted a foul, didn't get one, though, as Imani Smith caught a break. Yeah, she very easily could have been called for a foul right there. Just keep just trying. She's trying to swat at the ball, just trying to poke it free. I mean, you got to do it more subtle than that. You can't really have that big arm movement or else it's just it's going to be called a foul every time and Lawlin goes back to the scores table here just check in for the first time but Nanaka Preston from the right wing she buries home another three and again she's starting to heat up from behind the arc that's her fourth of the game so far second in the second half so it's really good to see her just really shooting the ball with confidence again 32-31, she gave the Lynx the lead as now Montero with a block down low on Finnan. And the Lynx coming back the other way. Clark with a no-look pass to Montero who was running the floor with her. Montero's pointing that it's out on St. Ambrose. And they're officially, now they're going to say it was out on St. Ambrose. Kind of took them a minute there. Yeah, it was kind of a weird play. I thought it might have hit off of Montero, but maybe I saw something differently. But Because I didn't really think a St. Ambrose defender was there, but I guess there was, so going to be a foul. There's going to be a foul on the play on the inbounds. I think Lolling is going to draw a foul. Not something that the Lady Lynx are used to having right here, but now this time they're going to switch it up and Lolling's going to throw in the inbounds. Yeah, that was Grady that picked up that foul. It's only her first. Right into Clea Montero. Just gets her own miss. Oh my. And the putback this time is in. And now the Lynx lead by three as she's really a force to be reckoned with as Preston now saves it from going out of bounds on the other end. Montero somehow could not come up with it. I believe that one was Cook who took the shot for St. Ambrose, could not finish, tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Fighting Bees underneath their, their basket here with 5.45 to play. That's really just great defense there from Clea Montero. Just knows that they're going up for a shot, so she just goes straight up with her hands, and it's not going to be called a foul, but on the inbounds pass, that is Martins there with a three, so that's a kind of a, a dagger right there. Just We thought we had him on the ropes. And it seems like St. Ambrose always seems to answer with the three of their own at times when they need it the most. As Clark, now to Lawling, back to Clark. Clark with it near midcourt. As they feed Montero down low to Cameron, drives baseline, little up and under move, can't get it to go. It's tipped out of bounds. They're going to say last touched off of St. Ambrose as... And Grady and Cameron both swatted it out of bounds, but I'd say Grady had last touch. Yeah, I think that was the right call. You saw me immediately point towards our direction. I I saw that pretty perfectly. Once again, they inbound it to Montero, who's making it look real easy. Down there underneath the basket, she'll finish, and the Lynx retake the lead by two. You just can't stop her down there. She's, I think she's kind of throwing out some questionable shots, but she's getting her own rebounds. Epperson tried to answer with a three to take the lead for St. Ambrose. Could not. Rebounded by Preston. Preston going coast to coast. And they're going to call a blocking foul right there as Colleen Grady didn't agree. As she hit the deck pretty hard. But Preston going to the line for two. Yeah, Preston kind of let in with a shoulder right there. I'm not kind of surprised that did not get called a charge. Usually when they lead in with the shoulder so hard, it's going to be a charge pretty much every time. But Grady just was not set. <laughs> And Grady was just kind of running backwards just a little bit. And yeah, Preston makes that first free throw to extend the lead to three. Here comes Realford back into the ball game along with Victoria Malone. So they are doing Realford and Montero in the game at the same time. That just adds so many more rebounds to our side, just having two great rebounders in there at once. I mean, I know Preston made them both right there, but did you see how quick Montero got yeah. around her defender? She already had position down low. Yeah, I mean, she's so quick. I mean, she that's why she's such a good rebound. She's so quick. She knows what's way the ball's coming off the rim at all times. And she was there for an offensive rebound in case Preston did miss a free throw, but instead she did not. This is 38-34. Here comes St. Ambrose. Epperson now trying to drive into the lane with 10 seconds on the shot clock, but they're going to have a foul going against Lawling on the reach. So her second team's third as the Lynx lead by four. 
Uh, kind of a ticky-tack foul there by Kennedy Lawling. I'm not sure really where the contact was, but she's got her with the body contact. And now Martins drives in left side lane, and she'll finish off the glass. So St. Ambrose not going anywhere quietly as we're four and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter. Lynx lead by two as Preston takes another three from the same spot, this time just a hair short, but not a bad shot if you're the Lady Lynx. No, she got a pretty open look as Realford gets a, a tip on the other end. Just unfortunately goes right back to St. Ambrose. They need to get the ball. Preston... But- just started running down the floor. We didn't even have the ball, and it would have ended up pretty much right where she was if she just would have went to the ball. Again, Cook made that one, got her own miss, and took another jumper, made the second one this time. So we're tied at 38 as Lawling trying to feed Montero down low. It's kind of seeming like trying to get St. Ambrose with the ball movement, trying to get Montero open up down low. Yeah, they're really just trying to feed her down low. She's been so dominant in this game. She's going to take a seat along with Monica Preston as uh, Hannah Cameron comes back in. But as as I was saying, they just need to just keep doing what they're doing. Here's Lawling for three. No good. Has not been able to knock down a three. She's a pretty good shooter, though. She's got a pretty good shooting form, but just unable to hit. I was going to say, we haven't seen much of her shooting the long range from there. But again, like you said, a great shot. Look for her to have some more down the stretch of this season. As Everson drives baseline, can't get it to go. Thought about an over and back instead. Let the ball go. And basically gave it to Imani Smith as we're coming back the other way now. Malone back to Smith now. 38-38, 3-15 left to play in the third quarter. Malone with it on the left wing to Lawling. To the top of the key now in Cameron. Cameron to the right wing in Smith. Smith looking for Malone, can't do it. Instead now drives baseline and is going to pick up a foul going against Martins. I think it's really Imani Smith's game to kind of take over right now. She's been kind of quiet. I mean... Not that many points in the first half. Actually, she did not score in the first half, which is so surprising for her. And I don't think she scored in the second half as well. So she's going to be at the line here for two shots because we're in the bonus. And she's standing so far away. I mean, we noticed it yesterday. But then we're kind of at a different angle yesterday when she was doing it. But now we're right in front of her. And she's two feet behind that line. It's an interesting choice. And... Like you said, I mean, she's two feet behind the line, and I saw her working on it earlier before the game started. She was in here shooting and kind of working on the free throws as the first one was was looked pretty good, but it was just a tad bit short. The second one she makes, but what can you make of that? Just got to put more leg in it, I guess. If you're going to stand that far back, you got to really just thrust through your legs to get the ball there. As Epperson now takes a mid-range jumper, no good from the free throw line as it's rebounded by Samantha Realford. 39-38, Lynx lead by one, 2.45 to play in the third quarter. Lawling now with it on the left wing, looking for Cameron at the top of the key. Swinging it to the right side now for Smith. Cameron sets a screen for Malone as she gets it at the top of the key. A little jumper from the free throw line and banks it home. She, she banks in more shots than anyone else I know. I mean, she just, she goes for it every time. And it's not even like from an angle. It's straight on with the rim. Just goes for the bank shot. Hey, the backboard's there for a reason, and she intends to use it. As St. Ambrose now coming back the other way with a three by Aubrey Carlson. Carousel, and she'll bury it home, and we're tied yet again at 41. Just another dagger right there. As soon as we think we're building a pretty good lead, they just come back and just hit a three right in our face. Lolling over to Realford now. Trying to feed Cameron down low. Could not instead to send to the top of the key. Looking left in Malone. Malone wants a screen set by Hannah Cameron. She finally does but now it's, she's double teamed. Malone fades it over to Smith with one second on the shot clock. Takes up a long three. No good. Rebounded by St. Ambrose. Yeah, just a, a broken possession right there, just unable to get get a good shot off there as Monty Smith had to just throw that up right at the buzzer. And St. Ambrose back on the other end, though, throws it away, and it's going to give the ball right back to the Lynx as Tia Clark checks back into the ball game to get Lawling. An interesting choice here by Coach Polite. We haven't seen much of Whitney Gines, I mean, or of the other Lawling sister and Madison Howard as well. As that ball's loose on the floor, somehow Cameron comes up with it, finds Malone, and Malone with a good right hand puts it up and in. There's a really good pass there 
from Hannah Cameron, noticing that the defense was collapsing in on her, so just a, kind of a little dump-off pass there to Victoria Malone for a nice scoop layup. Under a minute to play now in the third quarter, 43-41. Lynx lead by two. St. Ambrose with the basketball here. As they find Epperson. Epperson drives into the lane. Rilford is right there. Puts up a floater nowhere close to the rim. Right into the lap of Hannah Cameron. As she'll bring it up the floor over to Tia Clark. 35 seconds to go. Shot clock and game clock. Separated by about 10 to 12 seconds. As Clark now with it. Bounce passes one to Cameron. But Cameron can't get there. And it's stolen away by St. Ambrose. Shot clock turned off. As they have a fast break opportunity, but good defense by the Lynx as somehow, some way, Haley Cook just throws up a, I believe it was more of a pass that ended up going in. Yeah, it was Hannah Cameron had her hand on the ball, and it still just finds finds the way into the basket. As Tia Clark loses that one and out of bounds, they're going to say last touch by Clark, so it'll give the ball to St. Ambrose. Here with 3.7 seconds left to go before the start of the fourth quarter. We're tied at 43 due to some luck by St. Ambrose on the other end. They'll inbound underneath the Lynx basket as they just throw it in. Two seconds to go. They're not even across half court yet. And nobody was aware, as I believe maybe even their head coach was just say, hey, let's get it into the fourth quarter. So we're headed to the fourth quarter. We got a good one. Don't go anywhere as we're tied at 43. The next 10 minutes will decide it as you guys are listening to Lady Lynx basketball right here on 89X. Every hiring manager knows that a company is only as good as the people it's made from. So where do you find the best people? That may surprise you. Meet the grads of life, young adults of unique determination and experience, an ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. This is talent worth knowing about. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Check her out. Oh, oh, man. I like that. When young men turn 18, they think they know a lot about the facts of life. But there are a few more facts they need to know. Fact, you have to register with Selective Service when you turn 18. It's the law. Fact, registration keeps you eligible for government jobs and student loans. Fact, it's easy to register. Just visit sss.gov or any post office. Register with Selective Service when you turn 18. It's the law. And that's a fact. We're back in the Jack Dean Nutt Arena where we are tied going into the fourth quarter. Lady Lynx taking on St. Ambrose University. The Fighting Bees is St. Ambrose from Davenport, Iowa. 43 all here as we are down to the final 10 minutes of this ball game. As it will be St. Ambrose basketball here as Cameron trying to go for the steal right off the gate and end up going to draw a foul there. I like the aggression there from Hannah Cameron, just just a tad late and just does not come up with a steal right there. Instead, just knocks over St. Ambrose player. Not really sure who that was, but just knocks her right over. That's going to be Cameron's third. And Lady Link staying out of foul trouble here for majority of this ball game as they feed looks like carousel down low. Good defense, though, by Cameron into the hands of Malone outlet to Preston. Preston still having some trouble with it, trying to force one to Clark and it was kind of a bad pass plus a bad feet set up there all in one. Yeah, just could not keep control of the ball right there. Or else she probably would have gone in for herself and got the layup, but just unable to unable to capitalize on the fast break. As now looks like Epperson took a little mid-range jumper, couldn't get it or got it to go. As it's now St. Ambrose lead 45-43 with nine minutes left to play. Imani Smith with it now on the right wing. Looking for Montero down low and set across the court pass to Clark. Clark thought about a three and said waiting to feed Montero down low. Tries Cameron, but it's almost batted away. Clark ends up with it. Finds Smith, who's running the floor over to Montero. Montero with the five-foot jumper from the baseline. No. It's the ball still loose and batted out of bounds. They're going to say last touched out of bounds. No, they're going to call a foul on Hannah Cameron for pushing her out of bounds. That Adam, do you like this call? No, because they're both going for the ball. So it's, I don't really see how you can, she can't just like close out on her like that, just not allow her to touch it. So it's, I think that's kind of a bogus call. I'm not, I'm really surprised Coach Polite's not really coming out of his seat at all. Just, I guess he kind of got warned to sit down. So 
he's not going to give his word to the official. I mean, that's what sometimes that's what happens when you, you know, you speak freely a little, you know, early sometimes in these ball games. As that one, St. Ambrose was trying to run the baseline and they just caught it right out of bounds. So therefore, that's going to give the ball right back to the Lady Lynx. But they trail by two, and Cameron's on the bench with four fouls. Yeah, so that's unfortunate that we can't have Hannah Cameron in the ball game. That's a pretty big loss for her. We bring in Samantha Realford, who is very capable on the offensive and defensive class, but just not much of a scorer. So hopefully she can fill in some shoes here. Clark thought about a three from the top of the key instead. Drives in, tried to throw up a shot. It looked like she got fouled. They're going to say it was tipped. Instead, finds Preston Preston off the back of the, the rim and out. And once again, St. Ambrose coming the other way. Martins almost had it poked away by Clark. Now, I believe, finds Cook. Cook in the right side corner now trying to drive in. That was Kelliker, and she couldn't finish. Outlet now to Preston, who got the rebound to Smith. Smith trying to drive in, instead backs it out, and you're going to set up the offense here for the Lady Lynx. Yeah, need a good shot here. You try to find Montero down low. Smith trying to drive in. Looked like she had the corner, and like you said, trying to feed Montero, but drew the foul in the meantime. Yeah, so I'm not sure if it's going to be on the floor in the, in the shooting process as Coach Blight's going to call a timeout here. So Coach Blight's going to take a timeout. So will we. A 30-second timeout. We'll be right back right after this as your Lady Lynx trail by two. You guys are listening to Lady Lynx basketball right here on 89X. Chances are there'll never be an emergency ever again. But just in case, let's talk about a plan. Okay. Who is going to grab the go bag? What's a go bag? It is a bag we do not have that is filled with things we really, really need in an emergency. Guess we won't have to worry about it then. Well, this is great. <laughs> I am so glad that we don't have a plan. I know. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Back in the Jack Dean Nut Arena where it's 45-43. Here's, we got a good one here. Seven and a half to play. Lady Lynx set the inbound underneath their own basket. After coming out of the timeout by Coach Polite. They throw it into Montero to Rilford. Smith now with it at the top of the key to the right wing for Clark, who takes a three off the front of the rim. Can't get it to go. They're going to call an over a back call on Kalia Montero. Yeah, just unfortunate there, my Montero. Just She knew she did it as soon as, as, soon as she kind of put her arm over there. She knew it was going to be a foul on her, so just starts running down back down the floor. St. Ambrose trying to answer back the other way. Martin's trying to drive into the lane left side. Instead, kicks it back out. Now across the court pass here to Kelliker. It's Carousel now back to Kelliker at the top of the key. Swinging it around over to Rawling. Rawling now to Flynn. Flynn down low to Cook. And Cook ends up finishing underneath the basket. So some good ball movement there by the Fighting Bees as they now lead by four, 47-43. That was a really good play there by Cook, just avoiding the defense of Kalia Montero and just poking it out of bounds right there and not letting Montero get an easy basket inside. And Clark was trying to feed Montero down low, could not. As again, the Lynx set the inbound underneath their own basket here in this one. And once again, we're going to have another T- timeout taken. This time we'll stay right here. 47 43, 6 45 left to play, Adam. And what are we going to see here in this fourth quarter by this Lynx team? I mean, they're going to have to provide a spark of some sort. Yeah, they. I think they need to start shooting a little bit more. I mean, we're trying to force feed Kalia Montero now, which, I mean, which isn't bad. I mean, if she's open, you need to give it to her. But if, you, if she has two girls on her, don't try to force it inside. Just shoot from the outside. And we're kind of seeing that as of late. You can almost kind of tell like Haley Cook and a couple other of the bigs for St. Ambrose kind of really baiting them into that. Yeah, they're yeah, like like you said, baiting them. That's a good word for it because, I mean, they're giving her position, but then as soon as the pass comes in, they completely bail on the position, go for the ball, and then the double's coming. So they're doing a good job on the defense on trying to guard Kalia Montero. Now, on the offensive side of things, who are you trying to look for on this Lynx team that, I mean, I, you know, to really kind of set the tone here late in the fourth quarter? I think it's got to be not a compression. I mean, she's hit countless shots in this game, hit four three-pointers, and just haven't really heard from her since. So hopefully 
she can uh, kind of put her mark in this fourth quarter. I'd have to agree with you as well. I think if you're going for a shooter, you think you got to go with Nanaka Preston. She's having a good game here today. But also as well, you know, like you said, feed Montero if she's open down low. And you can see that they're clogging the lane right here off the inbounds as they get it to Smith. Trying to feed Montero. Once again, double teams. Smith is going to have to back it out to Real for the top of the key. Over to Clark now on the left wing. Clark to feed Montero at the top of the key to Smith. Smith over to Preston in the wing. 4-3. No. Rebounded, though, by St. Ambrose. They're coming back the other way. They have numbers as they feed Haley Cook. Haley Cook trying to get it underneath their own basket. She misses. However, though, offensive rebound is there as now we got a tie-up underneath the basket with Samantha Realford and Charlotte Flynn as both of them were there. Possession arrow in favor of the Lynx with the jump ball. Yeah, really good play there by Samantha Realford just trying to get the ball. I mean, don't allow that offensive rebound. So just her and Cook are really fighting it for it right there, but... We come away with the last laugh there with the jump ball. 47-43, just over six minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. The Lady Lynx trail to St. Ambrose here in this one. They do have the basketball. Clark now with it with the mid-range jumper, and she'll knock one down right there. So back to a two-point deficit for this Lady Lynx team. Just really good play there by Tia Clark, noticing that Martins was on the ground right there, just unable to guard her. So just take a step in and try to get that little floater. As they feed it down low to Haley Cook, who's working on Montero, and Montero not trying to pick up another foul, as she's already got three in the ball game, as ends up giving Cook the easy two. And Cook really only has one move, and she's used that one move the whole game. Montero really just needs to pick up on everything she's doing. They give it to Preston now. Preston trying to drive in, but Martin's moving her feet well, takes the charge, and it's another turnover by the Lynx. That's not a good call there. I can't agree with that one. I I don't think Martins was really in position there to take that charge, and, and I don't think Preston really lowered her shoulder or anything. I think she was just kind of dribbling. So first time it worked, the second time it did not. Exactly right. <laughs> so We'll see what happens in the next five and a half minutes here. 49-45, St. Ambrose with the basketball and the lead. You know they're trying to feed Haley Cook down low. Instead, they cannot get it to her. Montero with some good positioning down low. Martins down low this time to Carrollson. She could not hit. Gets her own miss, though, however. Right over Preston yet again, and she'll knock the second one down. Lady Lynx coming back the other way. 51-45 now. Under five minutes to play. Imani Smith loses control of it. Ball's loose on the floor, but still regained by Imani Smith. They wanted, or Mr. Hoffman wanted a reset of the shot clock. Didn't get one, though. However, Montero trying to feed Preston down low. Somehow ends up tipping it back out to Realford at the top of the key. Preston now with it over to the ring, wing in Smith. Smith picks up her dribble, trying to find Clark in the corner, but instead throws it across the court and right into the hands of Maddie Cash for the St. Ambrose. Ambrose now coming back the other way as they leave again. Carousel open wide open on the baseline for a jumper. No good, though. Offensive rebound as Martins pulls it down. Back out to Maddie Cash, and they're going to set up the offense here. Cash to Carousel. Spinning one way to another, and now we're going to have a foul going, I believe, against Imani Smith. As she tried to reach in right there. It will be her second. Team's fifth here, so that's going to put St. Ambrose on the line for two opportunities. I really just, I'm not really sure what's going on with the team right now. We're just, we're not playing Lady Lynx basketball. We're, we're trying to force force things inside. It's just, it's not working for us. Hannah Cameron and Victoria Malone come back in for Monty Smith and Montero. And Hannah Cameron's got four fouls, so she's got to be careful. If she picks one up, she's gone. So that's just another person that we don't have off the bench. As they knock down a pair of free throws, this carousel. 53-45, four minutes left to play in this one. Preston going to have to do everything she can. Takes a jumper in and out here for the Lady Lynx. It was about three-fourths of the way down, but and comes right back out. And that's kind of been the story here in the fourth quarter for the Lynx. Yeah, just unable to hit shots. I mean, we're getting good looks, just unable to hit. As an offensive rebound there by Cook yet again. Putback is in as well. So what was a two-point lead for St. Ambrose is now up to 10, 55-45 on an 8-0 run here by St. Ambrose. Yeah, really just doing a good job just trying to extend their lead. Malone now with it on the left wing looking for Preston. Instead has the bounce pass one over to Clark. Clark gets a screen, goes to the right side of it from Realford, and now we have a foul going 
against St. Ambrose on a reach-in call, I believe, by Finnan. And it will. She'll pick up her second. Team's second in the quarter. So St. Ambrose doing a pretty good job of staying out of the foul trouble and keeping the links off the line. Yeah, it's definitely not what you want to do when you're ahead. Just don't foul. Or else, I mean, that's just more stoppage of play that you have to deal with on the other end. So they just want to let this game or let the clock run out because they have that 10-point lead. Just over three minutes to play. Lynx trail by 10 is now that one stolen away by Haley Cook. She's all alone on a fast break. She'll just easily lay it up and in for a nice two points. And it's 57-45 and another timeout taken by Coach Polite here for the the Lady Lynx. It's a full timeout, so we're going to take a break as well. The Lynx trail 57-45 with three minutes to play. Don't go anywhere as you guys are listening to Lady Lynx basketball right here on 89X. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn to spot a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. I'm Paul George. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Did you just look down at your phone? You did it again, didn't you? You know, you're flying down the road in a three-ton hunk of steel. And a text takes your eyes off the road for an average of five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's long enough to travel the length of a football field and cause some serious damage. Turn it off. Trust me. Whatever it is, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. We're back in the Jack Dean Nut Arena. Here's it's a 12-point lead for St. Ambrose. They lead at 57-45 over your Lincoln College. Lady Lynx, 3-10 left to play. Still enough time here for the sharp, sharp shooters of this Lady Lynx team to kind of be deadly from behind the arc. But we're asking a lot out of them now, aren't we, Adam? Yeah, we really... If we're going to start doing that, we need to start getting the open sh- open shots, just setting a ton of screens. As that one's poked away there by St. Ambrose, as Smith was trying to feed Lawling, but instead batted away, so the Lynx will inbound right next to Coach Polite. Only 20 seconds left on the shot clock, so we just need to get a good shot right here. Just And we don't have Montero in the game, so we don't have that post presence. Really, no post player in the game for this Lady Lynx team other than maybe Hannah Cameron, but she's not really a post player. She's more of a stretch four kind of shooter, so not really sure what the game plan is right now. As Smith now trying to drive into the lane, kicks it out to Malone. Malone's just going to throw up a shot and somehow gets it to go as the shot clock was winding down. I don't even think she knew where to go with that. I think she just kind of turned around and just kind of threw up a shot, threw up the prayer. The prayer was answered with the swish bomb. It is Sunday. Maybe she went to church beforehand. Well, who knows as Haley Cook down the other end answers as well with the right hand turnaround jumper. That's really the problem with no post player in the game for the Lady Lynx is Cook is just going to go to town underneath and just going to get on any time. It's Amani Smith's going to draw a foul. Pretty sure that's going to go on Cook. That's her fourth foul. So she has to be careful. Montero and Tia Clark come back into the game. And one thing you got to love, though, from Haley Cook is she's kind of, she thought it was a ticky-tack foul to begin with, but then she looks straight over at her coach. Her coach is explaining to her, like, hey, this this is what happened, and this is what you're not allowed. And that's what you want to see as a coach and player. You mean coaching. Yeah, just, yeah, coaching. Don't argue with the official. Let the coach do that. As not if the gets in the lane for a nifty layup, but as I was saying, you know, just tell the coach. I mean, the coach is needs to tell you what to do to not pick up that kind of foul next time. And and that also helps, you know, because the coaches get the uh, the ex- explanation from officials sometimes as well. So that kind of you really want to listen to your coach as much as you can. I know that every coach seems to say that, but I really do mean it. Yeah. And then on the other end, Tia Clark comes up with the seal and just hits the deck hard. As now they're feeding Montero down low, she's going to get fouled and go to line for two. But Tia Clark still just kind of feeling her head. I mean, she's kind of trying to put a lot of pressure on it and then seemed kind of lost right there. It didn't seem like she even knew the whistle was blown. So maybe you need to get her out of the game. And she's still kind of squinting a little bit as well. 
Montero, though, however, does make her first. It's back to single digits. Here as, again, Carousel and, I believe, Epperson both check back into the ball game here for St. Ambrose. As they lead it by 9, 59-50, minute 29 to go in the fourth quarter. Montero, second one, no good. Almost got her, actually does get her own miss. Takes it right away, almost from Hannah Cameron. As they cannot either one buy a one. And now we have a traveling violation going against Martins. And Tia Clark and Martins kind of uh, giving a little look at each other here in that one. But the Lynx will have the basketball here underneath their own basket with a minute 22 to go. So if Preston or Clark could easily hit a three here, we might have a ball game. Yeah, we really need one right here. Here's Wait. Nanika Preston on cue. I was going to say they Short. set up a screen, but Cameron is there for the rebound and put back. And now another timeout taken here by Coach Polite. He's going to have one more remaining, I believe, right after this. Again, St. Ambrose still has all five timeouts. We'll stay right here, 59-52. Yes, you can see they were thinking along the lines we were. Uh, they needed a three. They went to Preston. Again, came up a little short, but Hannah Cameron there for the offensive rebound and put back. Now all of a sudden with a seven-point game here for the Lynx, what do you got to look for on defense and then coming back the other way on offense as well? well really don't let uh, Haley Cook touch the ball down low. Force them to shoot jump shots, preferably deep jump shots because, I mean, low percentage really, but uh, they have been making them quite a, quite a few in the game, so you don't want to give them too open of a look. Just contest, contest, contest. That's all you can really ask for right here and then crash the defensive glass. Do not, do not want to give up any offensive rebounds. And we've seen this full court press here. They do have Haley Cook way down in the back. As, again, we're, we're going to see what's going to be in store here in the next minute 15. Madison Howard also comes in to get the press. Just more quickness in the lineup. As, again, now they St. Ambrose did break the full court press. They do get it across midcourt just barely. And now we're going to have a foul, I believe, going against Madison Howard, who I believe was told to foul. Yes. She's brought in for the press just for quickness, and then they got it across half court, and then she's the one that needs to foul because that's only her first. And got to love the play here from Coach Polite. Trying to do everything he can to keep his players not in foul trouble, as the first one from Martins is no good. And this was a, a team that you said at the beginning of the broadcast that could not shoot free throws very well down the stretch. We'll see what they can do here. Uh, yeah, like you said, just unable to hit that first one hopefully it'll work out for us and she can miss the second she does not but still one is better than two so we just need to we need to capitalize right here and get a bucket 52 to 60 is the score Lynx trail by eight smith over to press and press and catch a shoot from the top of the key no good kind of airballed a, a three way to the left and that's not the not like a pressing that we've seen in this ball game yeah, kind of back-to-back -back air balls really but now uh, St. Ambrose is going to call a timeout. St. Ambrose wants to talk things over right here. We'll stay right here as well. 60-58 with under a minute to play now here in this one. Now with what we've just seen, I mean, we, we still think Preston is capable of burying that three. But it, after what you've just seen, two air balls in a row, do you still go to her? Or do you have to switch it off? Or does Coach Polite have the confidence in Nana Preston? I think Nana Capresta needs to get a more open look because they're kind of flying at her at the last second, so she's rushing her shot. And maybe look for Imani Smith I mean, or Tia Clark. I mean, they haven't really been hitting them in the game, but they haven't shot that many. So something that they need to look forward to. And even Hannah Cameron can knock down a three-pointer from the corner, so something to look forward to. I was going to say Imani Smith was only 0 for 1 in the first half. Only took one attempt, didn't make it. Hopefully that didn't scare her away from down the stretch. They're here really, in this one. St. Ambrose has really done a good job of always having a girl on her at all times. Just not letting her shoot. St. Ambrose gets it ball in. They're trying to basically kind of get a steal here with 40 seconds to play. But instead, now they're going to have to foul. As Clark, I believe, is going to pick up that one. And I, she should be okay. She's kind of stayed out of foul trouble for the majority of the game. And she has. That's only her second. But again, St. Ambrose... In the bonus, so they're going to go to the line for two opportunities with 40 seconds left. I think the only person that really can't foul is Hannah Cameron with the four fouls. I think everyone else is pretty much fine. I think Montero might have three, but, I mean, only 40 seconds left, so you can give one up right there. And as both free throws 
were good there in this one by Hannah Ford. So it's back to a 10-point lead with 40 seconds to play. Smith will bring it in up the floor. Again, Coach Blight only has one timeout remaining. As Smith with it on the right wing, trying to feed Preston. She will, under 30 seconds to play to Clark. Clark thought about a three instead, drives baseline, puts up a floater off the front of the rim. No, as it's pulled down by St. Ambrose. St. Ambrose now just has to get it across half court. They will. They'll find Haley Cook. Haley Cook now just kind of throwing the ball around a little bit, and they're going to back it out out of the way. But Clark's still fighting hard as now Smith was there. But I believe kind of a little pushing and shoving going on there between Finnan and Imani Smith, and it all started at the other end with Finnan and Clark going at it. Yeah, just kind of Finnan just kind of frustrated because she feels she's getting hit, but nothing has been called really. So I think the refs are just kind of kind of trying to get this game over with because it's kind of no coming back at this point. No, no real reason to foul. Ten seconds to go as she does make them both. 64-52 now as they lead by 12. Four seconds to play. Monty Smith's going to have to throw up a, a long three. Can't get it to go. It ends up an air ball, but somehow doesn't go out of bounds. And it's going to end up running the clock out in this one. But your links fall here to St. Ambrose by the final score of 64-52. And it's been a very tough, tough stretch of games here for the Lady Lynx. Again, like we talked about, three games in four days. You know they're going to have to be tired here in this one. What can we expect out of this Lady Lynx team? Well, they're going to get a few days rest. I'm not sure when their next game is, but it's is not, I think, not maybe not till Wednesday, I think, is their next game. So, I think they're here, and that'll just, or Friday. I'm, I'm sorry about that. So, we're going to get the pretty much a whole week off from the ladies, and that that Friday game will be just me, I believe, because you'll be on the road with the guys. So, once who who do they play that game, Nick? They will play uh, Bethel College at home. Okay, so it should be a good matchup. A lot of rest coming the Lady Lynx uh, way as the 5.30 game start. It's just a singular game, just the ladies because the guys are on the road. I'm not really sure if the guys have a, a corresponding schedule to where it would be us and then you. But either way, it's... It'll be okay just because they're both action will be on somewhere because I think we'll be on LCT and you'll be on 89X, so it'll work out pretty good. Yep, the guys will actually be at Bethel. Yes. So they're kind of flip flop. They play the same teams, but one's home, one's away. The ladies will be at home. The guys will be on the road. Again, we'll have more information with that due to with our technical difficulties. We'll have to rearrange on what is actually where the game is going to be, but it will be. Somewhere live, we can tell you that, 88.9 FM or on the LCTV channel, Channel 5 as well. But that's going to do it all for us. Again, we will see you guys on Wednesday night for the men's game at Robert Morris in Chicago. Adam and I will be there on call for that as well. So, again, we'll see you guys Wednesday night in Chicago. But the final here in this one, Lady Lynx trail or fall by the final score of 64-52. Here in this one, again, alongside me is Adam Hoffman. I'm Nick Jackson. Thank you, Miranda Verge, for board hopping for us back at the station. And we'll see you guys Wednesday night in Chicago. That's all she wrote. This concludes tonight's coverage of Lincoln College basketball on 89X.